are. Okay. All right. So here we go. So we are, let's start with a polygon. I'm going to start with a polygon. And I'm going to start there. There's some tools and some effects we can try. I haven't shown you this before. This is going to be a new um, effect. We're going to go to distort and transform, pucker and bloat. You see, I have my selection of this shape and I'm going to play with pucker and bloat. I'm going to bloat it. And notice how I can start making it look like a flower. petals on a flower. So for those of us who are doing like little cherry blossoms or something of that nature, this little trick can be very quick. We're taking a polygon shape. I'm using the pucker and bloat tool. And then I'm going to say, okay. So once I have the flower shape that I want, the petals on a flower I want, I'm going to go to object, expand appearance. And now I have it just be that shape. So let's say this is, I make it pink. You know, and now it's a, a cherry blossom. I can add a little circle to the center of it. Oops, let's make this object arrange, bring to front. And now I have, and I make that yellow. And now I have a, and this gets a little pinker. Now I have a little cherry blossom. Does that help? Yes, that's a really great trick. Um, I was trying to follow along. So where is pucker and bloat? Is that Let's under do it again? Yeah. So pucker, pucker and bloat is under effects. Okay. Distort and transform pucker and bloat. Got it. I found it. So you're going to okay. start. We're going to do it again. We're going to start in the shapes. We're going to grab a polygon. I'm going to make a polygon. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go to effect, distort, and transform, pucker, and bloat. And I'm going to go over to bloat. Mm, gotcha. And I can make, depending on how, you know, I want this to be more cherry blossom like. So I'm not, you know, you can make this out like this and look at, make it look like a, you know, whatever star shapey kind of 60s thing. But I want it to be kind of a more like a, a, a cherry blossom, which is more like rounder, um, shorter little petals. So it's more like a, I'm at like 50, I'm at anywhere from 55 to maybe 70-ish, right? So I'm going to go back to 55 and make this one a little bit more, even a little bit more rounder and say, okay. Then I'm going to go to objects. And notice you can still see the, the polygon. In order to make it so I'm selecting just the flower, I need to expand the appearance under object. There we go. And then I just grab a circle. I have one. I can go for my tools here and go lips tool and add a circle. Right, and bring that into the center. I can take both pieces, use my alignment tools up here to align everything perfectly if I want. Right, and then I can grab and make my, make my, um, get over here in the pinks, there we go. There's my, my cherry, cherry blossom, right? That's probably more cherry blossom looking than my first one. That's, so yeah. And, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I was seeing a lot of cherry blossoms. So I, thank you for bringing that up. Um, Tiff, I wanted to share this with everybody because I saw so many cherry blossoms happening. And this is a real quick and easy way to make a cherry blossom type flower. Um, oh yeah, Siobhan, I see your hand up. I had a question about, um, so if you create like the same line with like the pen tool, how do I make it so that like, a piece of that line is thinner than the other part or one part is thicker. Can I do that in one, you know, 
yeah. thing. <laughs> There's a couple ways to do it. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways. So I'm going to start off with the line segment tool and just draw a line. Okay, so notice how unless I give it a stroke, it's just a, there's nothing. You don't see anything, right? If I went off of this line, it's invisible. There's nothing there. So I select it and I have to give it a stroke. So I'm going to start with giving it a stroke. I'm going to make it red so you can really, or orange so you can really see it. Now I go up here to my stroke tool and I'm going to make it a certain, a little bigger so you guys can see it well. So I'm going to make it 10. Now, right now you can see here it's uniform. If I click on this, there are different ways the line can form. So here is one where it goes thin on both ends and thick in the middle. Here's one that kind of goes thick to thin and then back thick to thin. Here's one that starts out thin, gets wider, and then goes back to thin. So you see there's all these different ones you can kind of play with. Here's the thick to thin I think you're referencing. Is that what you were thinking of, Siobhan? I think so, Yeah. Just so that's up here. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so there's that, right? So that's one I one way. And I'm going to show you one other way you can do this. Um, so this is a very, and if you were doing just a thick to thin, this is the way I would do it. Now, let's say you want to take that and turn it into a shape and not leave it be a line. Then you would just go to um, object, path, outline stroke. And now I've outlined that stroke and now that's a fillable stroke. Okay. Right. So I can now, I can now outline it if I want, right, and have it be an outline, or I can just make it a fill. But it's no longer a stroke, so it'll actually. You want to make sure that you don't mix shapes and strokes. You want to kind of have all things be, um, a, a more of a shape. I can also change the length of it now real easily because it's a shape. It's no longer a stroke. You see that. Yeah, thank you. You can do that here too, but it, when you get into scaling, it's going to behave differently. So when I go down to scale this, I'll make a copy of it. I'm oops, I'm holding my shift key down, and it's scaling accordingly. I'm going to do this one the same way, holding my shift key down, and I want to see how they show you how they scale differently. You see how that scaled, mm -hmm. and you see how that scaled. That kept the same starting point and end point and just changed it accordingly. This proportionally changed, scaled the whole thing down like it is to this new um, proportions. So that's the difference mm -hmm. of a shape and a stroke scaling. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Good questions. Very good questions. Any other questions? We have time probably for one more before the end of class. Okay. And the recording. <laughs>